The four marks of the church, also known as the attributes of the church, is a term describing four distinctive adjectives. One, holy, catholic and apostolic. Of traditional Christian ecclesiology as expressed in the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed completed at the First Council of Constantinople in AD 381, I believe in one, holy, catholic, and apostolic church. This ecumenical creed is today recited in the liturgy of the Roman Catholic Church both Latin and Eastern rites, the Eastern Orthodox Churches, the Oriental Orthodox Churches, the Church of the East, the Moravian Church, the Lutheran Churches, the Methodist Churches, the Anglican Communion, the Reformed Churches, and other Christian denominations, while specific doctrines, based on both tradition and different interpretations of the Bible, distinguish one denomination from another, largely explaining why there are so many different ones, the four marks, when defined the same way, represent a summary of what many clerical authorities have historically considered to be the most important affirmations of the Christian faith. History The ideas behind the four marks have been in the Christian Church since early Christianity. Allusions to them can be found in the writings of second-century early church father and bishop, Ignatius of Antioch. They were not established in doctrine until the First Council of Constantinople in 381 as an antidote to certain heresies that had crept into the Church in its early history. There the Council elaborated on the Nicene Creed, established by the First Council of Nicaea 56 years before by adding to the end a section that included the affirmation, We believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. The phrase has remained in versions of the Nicene Creed to this day. In some languages, for example, German, the Latin Catholica was substituted by Christian before the Reformation, though this was an anomaly and continues in use by some Protestant churches today. Hence, Holy Catholic becomes Holy Christian. Roman Catholics believe the description, one, Holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church, to be applicable only to the Roman Catholic Church. They hold that Christ established here on earth only one church, and they believe in the full identity of the Church of Christ with the Catholic Church. While there are numerous elements of sanctification and of truth which are found outside her structure, these, as gifts properly belonging to the Church of Christ, impel towards Catholic unity. The Eastern Church is not in full communion with the Catholic Church thereby lack something in their condition as particular churches." The communities born out of the 16th century Protestant Reformation, "...do not enjoy apostolic succession in the sacrament of orders, and are, therefore, deprived of a constituent element of the Church." The Eastern Orthodox Church, in disagreement with the Roman Catholic, regards itself as the historical and organic continuation of the original Church founded by Christ and his Apostles. The Oriental Orthodox Church disagrees with both and claims to be the historical and organic continuation of the original Church founded by Christ and His Apostles, the one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church of the ancient Christian creeds and the only Church that has always kept the true Christology and faith declared by the first three councils, Nicaea, Constantinople, and Ephesus affirmed by the Church Fathers and the Holy Tradition. The Augsburg Confession found within the Book of Concord, a compendium of belief of the Lutheran churches, teaches that, "...the faith is confessed by Luther and his followers as nothing new, but the true Catholic faith, and that their churches represent the true Catholic or universal church." When the Lutherans presented the Augsburg Confession to Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor in 1530, they believed to have showed that each article of faith and practice was true first of all to Holy Scripture, and then also to the teaching of the Church Fathers and the Councils." As such, the Lutheran churches traditionally hold that theirs represents the true visible Church. Marks <laughs> 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 There is one body and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all." Eph. 4-5-6.
This list in the Pauline letters of factors making Christians one body, one church, is doubtless not meant to be exhaustive, says Francis Aloysius Sullivan, but it affirms the oneness of the body, the church, through what Christians have in common, what they have communion in. Elsewhere, Paul the Apostle says, "...there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus." Gal. 3.28. This statement was about Christians as individuals, but it applied to them also as groups, as local churches, whether composed mainly of Jewish or Gentile Christians. In 1 Cor. 15-9, Paul spoke of himself as having persecuted the Church of God, not just the local church in Jerusalem but the same church that he addresses at the beginning of that letter as the Church of God that is in Corinth. 1 Cor. 1-2. In the same letter, he tells Christians you are the body of Christ and individually members of it." 1 Cor. 12 27, and declares that, "...just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ." 1 Cor. 12 12. Holy The word holy means set apart for a special purpose by and for God. It does not imply that the members of the church are free from sin, nor that the institution of the church cannot sin. Christ's church is holy because it is Christ's church. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 upon this rock, I will build my church. Matt. 1618 Jesus founded his church to continue his redemptive and sanctifying work in the world. Christians understand the holiness of the universal church to derive from Christ's holiness, Matt. 1619 and the church is holy because God is holy and the church shares in God's very own life and holiness, E.P.H. 530-33 Catholic Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go, then, to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And I will be with you always, to the end of the age. The word, Catholic, is derived from the Greek adjective Catholicos, Catholicos meaning, general, universal. It is associated with the Greek adverb katholo, katholo, meaning, according to the whole, entirely, or, in general, a combination of the preposition kata meaning, according to, and the adjective holos meaning, whole. Applied to the church, the adjective, Catholic, means that in the church the wholeness of the Christian faith, full and complete, all-embracing, and with nothing lacking, is proclaimed to all people without excluding any part of the faith or any class or group of people. The adjective can be applied not only to the church as spread throughout the world but also to each local manifestation of the church, in each of which nothing essential is lacking for it to be the genuine church of Christ. For his subjects, Emperor Theodosius I restricted to believers in the one deity of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, in equal majesty and in a holy trinity. The term, Catholic Christians, and applied the name, heretics. To others, Edict of Thessalonica of the 27th of February 380. In the following year, 381, the First Council of Constantinople adopted the Niceno-Constantinopolitan Creed, expressing belief in one holy, Catholic, and Apostolic Church. Topic: <laughs> Apostolic. Topic: This describes the Church foundation and beliefs as rooted and continuing in the living tradition of the Apostles of Jesus cf. the 1913 Webster's Dictionary. The Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, Oriental Orthodoxy, and the Church of the East, each claim to have preserved the original teaching of the Apostles. They also have apostolic succession in that their bishops derive their authority through a direct line of laying on of hands from the apostles, a claim that they accept can be made by the other churches in this group. Many Lutheran churches, such as the Church of Sweden, and the Anglican Communion likewise teach the doctrine of apostolic succession. Other Christian denominations, on the other hand, usually hold that what preserves apostolic continuity is the written word, as Milne put it. 
A church is apostolic as it recognizes in practice the supreme authority of the apostolic scriptures. See also First Council of Constantinople Marks of the Church Nicene Creed State Church of the Roman Empire References Further reading the Symbol of Faith by Father Thomas Hopko Four Marks of the Church by Kenneth D. Whitehead The Four Marks of the Church by F.R. William Saunders Marks of the Church by Loyola Press <laughs>